That debate was crazy. Like the first hour of that debate was probably one of the most explosive debates I have ever watched, and I truly believe that 20, 30 years down the line, political scientists are going to be looking back at this debate and really judging every aspect of it, really analyzing how a billionaire who tried to buy his way into the White House got absolutely embarrassed on national television. That was, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. Like, if I say it was brutal for Mike Bloomberg, that really doesn't do it justice. And usually I don't recommend this because these debates are so toxic. But I honestly think that if you didn't see this debate, go back, watch the first half hour, uh, one hour at a maximum, and you will see that was incredible. And for all of this talk of unity, that was real unity that I saw, where you had each candidate basically taking turns dunking on the billionaire who tried to buy his way onto the debate stage, with the exception of Pete Buttigieg, who just had his nose up in the air the entire time, and was basically trying to portray Bernie Sanders and Mike Bloomberg as equal threats to democracy and the party, which is interesting, but we'll get into all of that. First, let's talk about some numbers. So when it comes to talk time, Elizabeth Warren clocked in 16 minutes and 35 seconds. Amy Klobuchar actually came in second place this time with a total of 15 minutes and 55 seconds. We had Bernie Sanders with 15 minutes and 24 seconds. Pete Buttigieg with 14 minutes and 46 seconds. Joe Biden with 13 minutes and 25 seconds. And Mike Bloomberg with 13 minutes and 2 seconds. So there is a lot to talk about with regard to this debate. I think that this debate may actually change the dynamics of the Democratic Party primary in a way. That's how influential I think that this will be. But one thing that I know for sure is that this was a good debate for Bernie Sanders. He came in as the definitive frontrunner, and I think he left as the frontrunner. Although there's things to talk about here, because we had a lot of admissions from the candidates that they basically don't really believe in democracy, with the exception of Bernie Sanders. But let me just jump right into it, get to the winners, the losers, and a new category that I am introducing. So when it comes to the winners, in this category, I am putting Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Joe Biden here, but there is a clear standout. And that is Elizabeth Warren. I think she absolutely dominated this debate and she did what she needed to do. She needed to have a good night. She was hanging on by a thread going into this debate. The uh, 538 projections claimed that she had a one in 100 shot of winning a majority of pledged delegates. Now, um, that's that's bad odds, right? It's really bad odds. To put it into perspective, Bernie Sanders has about a 41% chance of winning a majority of pledged delegates. Warren had a 1 in 100 chance. So she needed a phenomenal performance. She needed to go after the other candidates, be aggressive, and that she did. She attacked Bernie Sanders predictably because that's what she's been doing, but she finally ended this weird alliance between her and Amy Klobuchar. She attacked Pete Buttigieg, and perhaps more so than anyone else, she obliterated Mike Bloomberg. It was a bloodbath. And individuals online who are reporters who were at, you know, uh, Mike Bloomberg uh, debate watching uh, campaign headquarters or whatever, they were saying like members of his team were groaning during some of the exchanges between him and Elizabeth Warren because she absolutely exposed him. But that's not to say that Bernie Sanders didn't, you know, have a couple of times dunking on uh, Mike Bloomberg, asking him where his tax haven is, telling him that, you know, we live in a country where there is socialism for the rich and rugged individuals for the poor to cite Dr. Martin Luther King, and it was really brutal. Now, even though I think that Elizabeth Warren was the winner of this debate, I think that Bernie Sanders was in a fairly close second, and more importantly, he was able to maintain as the front runner. Like, he kind of just sat back as Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar took turns arguing, and Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar took turns arguing, and Bernie Sanders just was riding high. He stepped in when he needed to. He had a phenomenal performance, and I think that this really is going to um, not change the trajectory for him. I think he's going into Nevada very strong, and um, this is setting him up very well for Super Tuesday. We'll say that. Now, there's one more debate next Tuesday before South Carolina and Super Tuesday. But I think Bernie Sanders did a phenomenal job. Even though Elizabeth Warren is the winner, maybe she'll get a boost from this. Still, Bernie is looking really good. Now, Joe Biden, I do believe he is a winner, but he's not anywhere near... Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, I do believe that there's some distance with regard to the winners in this category. You have, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren way at the top as the main winner. You have Bernie Sanders in second. And then at a distant, distant third, you have Joe Biden. And 
Throughout the first half of this debate, he performed phenomenally well. He was articulate. He didn't seem to stumble over his own words. He was landing some pretty strong shots at Mike Bloomberg, and I think that the audience was feeling it. But towards the second half, didn't do too well. Uh, during his closing statement, he was protested for his role in deporting 3 million undocumented immigrants, and he should have been prote protested for that. That's disgusting. Um, overall, I think he did pretty well. Now, in the loser category, I have Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where's Mike Bloomberg? Hang on. We'll talk about him. But Pete Buttigieg, um, I don't know what he was trying to do, but he was attacking Bernie Sanders more than he was Mike Bloomberg during this debate. And throughout the entire debate, you can see his Twitter feed with his campaign attacking Bernie Sanders. Like, you can see that this little rat was jockeying for some type of power. And, you know, he knows that Mike Bloomberg going into this debate was one of the front runners, which is maybe why he chose to hold his fire. But you can see he wants to be the VP. He wants money from Mike Bloomberg if he's the nominee. So it's just, it's all so fake. It's inauthentic. You could see how disingenuous he is. He has the same rehearsed lines at every single debate. And this time, what was different when it came to that healthcare portion, where he tries to pretend as if he has the moral high ground, was he got exposed by Bernie Sanders. Like, he was talking about how his plan, Medicare for All Who Wanted, has majority support. Factually incorrect, Medicare for All has majority support. Elizabeth Warren called him out on that. You had Bernie Sanders call out his lies on Medicare for All, and not only that, but call out the financial contributions, the support he's received from the pharmaceutical industry. I mean, this is just, this is bad for him. This is bad. And you can really tell he was getting on everyone's nerves, uh, namely Amy Klobuchar who I don't think that mainstream media can possibly spin as having a good night. The question about her prosecutorial record was brought up, and that was really, really cringeworthy. The, the uh, portion of the debate where she was asked about the fact that she forgot in, a, in an interview with Telemundo the Mexican president's name, and then she tried to say Obrador and almost fucked up his name again. I mean, that was genuinely cringeworthy, and you can see her, like, visibly shaking when Pete Buttigieg, towards the end of the debate, kept trying to push her and push her buttons more and more and more, and it, like, honestly looked like she was going to physically assault him. Like, it was wild to watch. And when Elizabeth Warren said that she looked at her healthcare plan and it's, like, two sentences, embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. So I think that this... Warren Klobuchar alliance, maybe it was just one for strategy and not necessarily ideology, it's officially over. Now, when it comes to Mike Bloomberg, I had to create a special category for him because he lost so bad. He was so brutally demolished that I am creating the loser who got knocked the fuck out category because holy fucking shit, that was a bloodbath and, I mean, Mike Bloomberg was demolished within 10 minutes, and then they just kept taking more and more and more shots. And it's funny because everyone's paying attention. This is his debut, right? He's running all of these ads, spending hundreds of millions of dollars, hiding behind a curtain, and I think voters are seeing why he didn't want to show his face. He has zero charisma. Zero. He comes off as a creepy, out-of-touch Republican claimed that he earned his $50 billion, and then Bernie Sanders had a great line, actually, I think that your workers are the ones who earned that. He just, he demonstrated that he's not cut out for the Democratic Party. As centrist and center-right as the Democratic Party is, he's out of touch. He's too conservative for the modern Democratic Party, which really says a lot. And he just couldn't defend himself. No matter what he did, he couldn't land any uh, lines. The audience was actually audibly groaning at some of the things that he said. He was booed. He called Bernie Sanders a communist. You could see that he was like sweating and desperate. I've never seen a performance this horrible. Mike Bloomberg got knocked the fuck out and I don't know how else to describe it. You got knocked the fuck out, man. I mean, that first hour was probably going to be remembered for him as the most embarrassing moment of his life because you spend all this money to get on this debate stage. You basically have the DNC change the rules to accommodate you and you get knocked the fuck out on debate one? 
Oh, that's so embarrassing. That is so embarrassing. Like, if I'm Mike Bloomberg, I'm hiding my face for sure. I'm not showing up at the future debates. That was just harsh. Like, it, it was almost cringeworthy. It was so embarrassing. And even though I loathe him, even though I think that billionaire shouldn't exist, you almost feel bad for him because he's just getting destroyed right there. But then you remember, oh yeah, this is a greedy oligarch who's literally ruining democracy, so you can't really feel bad for him. I don't know what to say. Mike Bloomberg obliterated, absolutely curb stomped, each candidate took turns dunking on him. He was visibly uncomfortable. There were moments where he was fidgety. I mean, I don't even know that I have the words to capture how poorly Mike Bloomberg did. And it's so bad that I don't even think that the media can spin this. Like, how are you going to spin this as a good performance? How can you possibly say that Mike Bloomberg did a good job or even performed okay? I mean, this was awful for him. This was embarrassing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if his numbers started to drop right after this debate. That's how poorly he performed. Now, I'm not going to say that, like, he's done, but if he is done, if his campaign is over, it's this debate performance that did it. And, I mean, you had how long to prepare for this? You knew that all of these attacks would come out, the candidates would bring them up if moderators didn't, and they did, and your responses were just, it, it was laughable. It was embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. Your response to sexual harassment lawsuits against you was to say, well, I have women that work for me and they have uh, pay equity. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. So Mike Bloomberg performed so poorly that I had to create a special category for him. So to recap, in the winner category, I've got Elizabeth Warren at the tippy top. I've got Bernie Sanders in second place, Joe Biden in a distant third, and then I have Pete Buttigieg in fourth, Amy Klobuchar in fifth, and Mike Bloomberg at one billion, because that's how that's how bad he did. Like, honestly, like if you haven't seen this debate, again, I want to stress, watch it. Watch at least that first hour. Do yourself a favor. If you want to see a billionaire get dunked on, it's going to be glorious for you. Um, I think that Kyle Kalinske on Twitter described it as Bloomberg humiliation porn and that is so accurate and i saw a gif from jurassic park <laughs> that made me laugh about mike bloomberg entering the debate <laughs> and then i saw even from trevor noah who i think is a hack generally and not funny claim that you know a billionaire hasn't had this bad of a night since bruce wayne's dad in that alley it was bad and i think that it's universally seen that mike bloomberg was the biggest loser not even close he lost this debate and it might have tanked his entire campaign. All that money wasted, possibly, because of this debate. Now, getting to the specifics. When it comes to socialism, Bernie Sanders was absolutely dominant during this portion. So we have Lester Holt propose a poll and say, well, most people don't support socialism. And then Bernie's response was just incredible. He just stared at Lester and said, who's leading in that poll? crushing that narrative, uh, responding to, you know, this anti-socialism bias that MSNBC clearly has, an anti-Sanders bias more specifically that MSNBC had, by saying we already have socialism for the rich in this country, as I alluded to earlier. He's, he quoted uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and it was just absolutely incredible. Bernie Sanders, I think at this debate, perhaps more so than others, even though he's not the winner necessarily, demonstrated that if anyone is going to be able to take on Donald Trump, it's him. Possibly Elizabeth Warren, but nobody else can hold their own. Now, I think that Elizabeth Warren would lose to Donald Trump, but at this debate, at a really crucial time, she did demonstrate that she is a capable debater. Like, these last couple of debates, she's just been fading into the background, and uh, this time she came in guns blazing, and that's what she needed, so kudos to her. She uh, had a couple of cheap shots at Bernie Sanders uh, when the moderators decided to divert attention away from Bloomberg because everyone was dunking on him too much and tried to get people to attack Bernie Sanders because of his supporters. Elizabeth Warren joined in. But at the same time, I mean, Bernie Sanders held his own. I think that his responses were persuasive. Look, the black women on my campaign, Nina Turner, they get harassed all the time. So this isn't something that's unique to Bernie Sanders, in spite of what that little rat said on the debate stage. Pete Buttigieg literally tried to uh, say that Bernie supporters are uniquely evil. Okay, well, these uniquely evil Bernie bros aren't going to vote for you. So you better hope that you are successful in stealing the nomination, Pete, because you're not getting our vote. Now, uh, on that note of election theft, 
one of the most striking things in this debate, I think possibly the standout moment besides all the dunking on Bloomberg, was the fact that every single person on that stage, with the exception of Bernie Sanders, came out tonight against democracy. They revealed their inner authoritarian leanings. Because they all claimed that they would be open to stealing the nomination from someone, even if they have a plurality of delegates and the most votes. Even Elizabeth Warren said that. So we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper in a separate clip, but that honestly made me feel sick to my stomach because it showed the Democratic Party, they are frauds, and I don't think they really, like, they genuinely don't realize that if that happens, all fucking hell will break loose. Their party will be destroyed, Donald Trump gets a second term, democracy will be dead, and the Democratic Party will go the way of the dodo. We'll just put it that way. So I'm going to hold my fire with regard to that story because that is... It's scandalous. Like, it should be an international story. The oldest democracy is now having people openly running for president saying that they'd be open to undermining the will of the people, using superdelegates to steal the nomination away from the person with the most votes. And this comes at a time when all of these dipshits have been railing against the Electoral College, claiming that the person with the most votes should be able to win. And now they're all saying, you know, since I'm probably not going to be able to get more delegates than Bernie, yeah, I'd be open to stealing it. Disgusting, even from Elizabeth Warren. If they think they can do that and go on to win, I don't care how much browbeating you do, Donald Trump gets a second term. It's basically guaranteed, and that's like, the least that Democrats have to worry about because their party is just done at that point. But again, I don't want to speak too much about that because I have a separate segment for that. But um, <laughs> Democrats, they're playing with fire. Like, I can't stress that enough. But getting back to the overall debate, that's basically all that I want to say in my overall debate breakdown um, because I have more segments that I will plan on uh, putting up just about individual little instances here. And look... This debate was great. If you're a Bernie Sanders supporter, you've already got the momentum going into this debate. And so what we needed was for Bernie Sanders to be able to maintain and show strength when he's tested. He did just that. He performed exceptionally well. Elizabeth Warren had the breakout performance. You can tell she really prepared and good on her. But the question I think that we have to ask ourselves after this debate is can Mike Bloomberg survive this debate? I honestly believe it's an open question. And how will this debate impact Elizabeth Warren? I don't think that Joe Biden did enough to move the needle for him in Nevada. There's a poll that came out today that showed him and Bernie Sanders tied in South Carolina. Let me just explain. If Joe Biden loses South Carolina, his campaign can't survive. That is the firewall. He's been making everything on South Carolina. If he loses that, even if he ties, you can argue he's done. It can't happen. So I don't believe he did enough to move the needle, but I think his performance was okay. If Elizabeth Warren gets a boost, I will probably attribute it to this debate, but I just don't think that um, she's going to be able to do that. She's really far behind in Nevada. She could pull out a, you know, a second place victory, possibly a victory if really her performance is viewed by voters as you know that great. But I think that Bernie Sanders' performance was so solid that if you were already supporting Bernie Sanders, you have no reason to jump ship. All the momentum is behind Bernie Sanders. He has the most persuasive argument. And when it comes to healthcare, he really like honed his craft. Like, all these Democrats are talking about how Bernie Sanders wants to take away health care, and Bernie Sanders is able to respond in such a persuasive way that it makes them seem like liars, and it's because they are lying, right? Nobody's wanting to take away health care. Bernie Sanders wants to expand health care to 100% of the population, and Pete Buttigieg's plan about choice, I mean, his plans would raise costs for people. Elizabeth Warren exposed that. So I think that Elizabeth Warren's debate strategy in basically trying to go after everyone else I think it worked for her because when you're behind, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So you might as well go guns blazing, Elizabeth Warren. She had to turn up and I think that she did that. Um, but is it enough to, you know, uh, o overcome this gigantic behemoth in the race that is Bernie Sanders? I personally don't see it. I mean, Bernie Sanders has the entirety of the left coalescing behind him. And you see a lot of moderates now starting to break away from other candidates and on to uh, Bernie Sanders. When you look at head-to-head -head matchups, Bernie versus Biden, Bernie versus Klobuchar, he's demolishing them. The only one who comes close is Elizabeth Warren. So the question is, did she peel off 
Bernie Sanders supporters. If any, it's not going to be enough, I don't think. But she did do a great job at this debate. Overall, her and Bernie emerged victorious, and Mike Bloomberg just had a horrible, horrible night. I said on Twitter that I know he's not accepting donations, but I would be willing to send him some ice because he is definitely going to need it after this debate. Ouch.